What about headache? Again, MRI, uh, and this of course is a rebated indication. There's no need to irradiate a patient with headache now um, to find out what's going on inside their head. If you're worried about it, if they have red flags, order an MRI, it's a rebatable uh, indication. Um, if there's some kind of vascular component to it, you can throw in, you can um, add an MRA in. Um, if there's some kind of risk factors for sinus thrombosis, for instance, they might be um, pregnant or postpartum, for instance, six weeks postpartum with increasing headache, um, then we can add an MRV. Um, good radiologists will probably add those in based on the clinical indications. If they get detailed clinical indications, um, they can protocol it appropriately. Um, CT brain, you should restrict this for acute trauma, um, for acute hemorrhage, for major, um, it's more in a, a hospital setting as well, um, skull fractures, never order a plain x-ray for skull fracture, it's a waste of time because it's not the fracture itself that we're worried about, it's what's happened to the brain underneath, so you need to at least do a CT. CT of paranasal sinuses is a good test and I do lots of those, um, surgeons use them to work up the, um, what they're going to do if they've got ongoing um, disease, it's certainly a great um, screening test as well. Um, but as a, uh, an added bonus, when you, when you have a patient who has headache, which often they do when they have sinusitis, you get a free look at the sinuses um, when you order an MRI brain. So here's a young girl, she's 25, she was um, ordered an MRI brain quite appropriately for um, prolonged headache with some red flag symptoms and it turned out that her brain looked absolutely perfect but here she had an acute sphenoid sinusitis and we've got mucosal thickening and an air fluid level showing that that's an acute bacterial sphenoid sinusitis. So you get a free look at the, the sinuses. Would you see that as well on the CT? You would, yes. But she's 25 and she got that answer without having any radiation. So, But yes, you would see it absolutely. Um, this is a young boy who came in with headache. Um, can't quite remember the details of his clinical presentation, but there were some red flag symptoms. He had a GCS of 15, but there was something odd about the story, and so they ordered um, an MRI, and we can see on the sagittal T1 here, there's all this bright stuff in his superior sagittal sinus that shouldn't be there. And this is an MRV. So this is a normal left transverse sinus, oops, sorry. Normal left transverse sinus and sigmoid. And here, there's no flow in his right transverse sinus and there's no flow in the superior sagittal sinus. And this guy has, even though he's 19, and he didn't actually have any recognised predisposition factors to th uh, thrombosis, but he's got extensive dual sinus thrombosis. Um, and um, he had the right test first up to make that diagnosis. The other thing you look for in the brain is for secondary complications related to that hemorrhage, areas of ischemia. This, on the other hand, was an old fellow who rocked up to John Faulkner Emergency Hospital not looking too flash. And it's a great example of how CT is lovely for looking at acute blood or um, blood of various ages. So this fellow has huge bilateral subdurals and you can see the difference between, these are acute on chronic, so you can see the difference between hyperacute bleeding, so that's active bleeding there, and this is um, older blood with acute, uh, more acute blood layering down at the bottom. So the acute blood is denser, the older blood or the older collections are lower in density. So he had the, the three blood densities demonstrated bilaterally. And you can see that um, he was rushed off to have the neurosurgical evacuation of those. He didn't need an MRI to make the diagnosis. <laughs> seizures, that's an easy one. This is a blanket rule one. Don't order a CT for seizures. MRI is the only test that's worth doing you're inappropriately radiating a patient if you're investigating them for seizures if you do a CT. This is a poor uh, boy who'd come um, to Australia and he had had a left temporal lobectomy for seizures um, elsewhere over in Europe, Eastern Europe, and um, he had ongoing seizures post-surgery. <coughs> and we did this scan and unfortunately these are the hippocampi, so this is the bit that they were trying to take out and he had mesial temporal sclerosis, and they didn't say that in the request, but I know that because there's a hippocampus still there, and it is reduced in volume, it's abnormally bright compared to this side, so this is a very well-centered scan, you can see it's very symmetrical. So that's a normal volume, and here is a little tiny scrunched up bright thing, and that's the posterior aspect of the hippocampus, still there, still causing the seizures, even though they've taken all that temporal lobe out, because they didn't quite take all of the abnormal bit out. Lastly, if you're not sure which is the right test, we love speaking to referrals. It's really nice when somebody picks up the phone, I've got this patient here, I'm just not sure 
what to order. It's much better to do it at that point in time or even after you've seen the patient but before you want to order the test, if you're thinking about it afterwards. Um, you know, which, which scan should I order? Literally that phone call. I get quite a lot of those and it's great. It's much better than the patient rocking up and me thinking, oh, it's kind of <coughs> awkward. Um, I even had one the other day of a young boy that really clearly needed an MRI of his knee and he had been sent in for an ultrasound. And we don't bulk bill ultrasounds, well, we used to do now, but we had not been bulk billing uh, ultrasounds at this particular clinic. So the boy, and it was for instability and he'd had a soccer injury. And it was just the wrong test, and he's 19 or something. And I said, and not, so I said to his mum, look, it's not the right test, and he's, you're going to have to pay for this. It's not an out, it's, there's an out of pocket involved, and it's not the right test. What he needs is an MRI, which there's a Medicare rebate for. You won't be out of pocket for it, and we'll give you the answer. And so I sent him away, and his mum, and the GP was actually a friend of the family. And so it was all very just awkward, you know, because the GP wanted to save face and um, he ended up coming up back and having ultrasound anyway. But <laughs> um, and it was just all very awkward. It's much better to just ask first before the patient rocks up and then you can just, it's all seamless then. Thanks, Jane.